My name is Terry from Hello Stitch Studio, and today I'm going to show you how to put the zipper onto a quilt back to prep it for long arm quilting. So our, there's many ways that you can put a quilt on the frame, but our method is with this uh, zipper from uh, the quilting connection. So when you, there's two biggest tips I can give you right away, is that just like in sewing, things have to be put right sides together and we're working from the midline of the quilt out so right now i have my quilt back um, folded in half from where it's going to go on the frame so like the bar would be here and the bar would be at that end and so this is my midline of the quilt so i've got to find the midline on the zipper so i'll unroll it unzip it and here's my midline, which is marked. And they're specific to our frame. So you cannot get a zipper for another um, company and just expect to use it on our frame. We'd have to um, make sure it fits our frame. So I'm gonna continue unzipping. And you can see that this is says to the bottom of the quilt. I, maybe I should go like this. And this one, this side of the zipper, goes to the top of the quilt. So if you have a directional back, then you need to make sure you have your top and back, uh, top and bottoms where you want them. In our case, it's not directional, so I'm just going to pull one away and put that to that side. And so I have the top backing. And so the right side of the zipper is the printed side. This would not be the wrong side of the zipper. This is the right side of the zipper. And this is right side of the fabric where it's print up. And again, my midline is also on the right side. We mark it on the right side. So that would be the wrong side. So I'm going to make an initial pin right side together of my zipper to my back. Now each person's different if you happen to fold your quilt back the other way where it's wrong side up then you just have to remember right sides together so now my print of my fabric is right sides to the print on my zipper I um each person's different in terms of how comfortable how many pins they want to put in um and also it kind of depends on and I can always just kind of double check at the end um, this is going to be right side to right side. And because this is a stable selvage, I'm only going to do one pin. If it was a super stretchy fabric and I was worried about stretching, I might put in more pins, but one is enough in this case. So that's one side and then we work and do the other side. Okay, so there's my right side. The zipper cannot be this way because then you can't zip it onto the frame, right? The frame's gonna have to be over here. So if I did this, this is wrong side to right side. So that's incorrect. It needs to be right side to right side with the zipper teeth facing out. Cause if you can imagine, there'll be another zipper here to attach to. So if zipper teeth are in, there's no way to attach it to something, to the other zipper. So right side to right side, midline of quilt back to midline of zipper, and then a pin, pin fell, here we go. And I just pin, I open up, and I pin there. If it shifts a little, it's usually not big of a deal. And then we're ready to sew this on. All right, so we're ready to start sewing on our zippers. I've got my two midlines here. I like to keep them together because I only have one pin in them. If I had more pins, I'd be more secure. I wouldn't be so nervous, but, uh, or so conscientious about it. I'm not really nervous. I know they'll stay. Um, you need, you do, while we have a really thin foot on here, it's actually, could be, um, you don't need a zipper foot. Our foot is nice and thin, but we have worked um, 
put on zippers with fatter feet, just as long as the needle will fit in this space when you're sewing. Um, so if you've got a bigger foot, maybe you'll want to move your needle over to make sure it's somewhere in the middle of the zipper fabric, this polyester. Um, and then you'll want to put it on a basting length stitch because it's a pain to have to rip out little tiny stitches. So a basting length will make your life easier. So what I do is I open this up and again, um, the biggest tip, we're working from center out, right sides together, our zipper and our fabric is right sides together, and we're actually starting in the center, not from the end of the quilt, because it's inevitably gonna shift. Um, the fabric would sh start shifting separately from the zipper. So if we start in the middle, then we know if there's shifting, it'll be at the edges and it's not so um, hard on your quilt. Now this um, fabric has a fringe. So normally I recommend that um, you have a cut edge and the cut edge then is, you know, right at the teeth here, like, you know, like that. So on a fringe, then it's the where the fabric starts. Cause you don't want to go here and then accidentally be just sewing on fringe and that won't hold. So if you're working on a salvage with a little fringe, it's okay that the fringe covers the teeth, as long as the actual fabric is butt up against the teeth edge. So that kind of makes it hard. If, you know, you can't, I probably could have cut this off, but I like the salvage. Um, in this case, because it's such a stable edge, it really makes a nice, um, you know, attachment for your quilt. I don't do any back stitches. I just start kind of where the pin is and I just hold the fabric tight um, up against the zipper. And I go, um, like I said, because the selvage is so stable, I'm not worried about really stretching it out because there is no stretch in the selvage. That's what makes it such a nice edge to sew here. But if you have a cut edge and it's stretchy, then try to be aware of not overstretching it. And if you do overstretch it, if you have given yourself the three inches or four inches of space here, leader, um, cause we recommend that your quilt top is up to eight inches shorter than the quilt back. So the quilt back should be eight inches longer than your quilt top and that helps account for the fact that if you do stretch as you sew if you put your quilt top down here you won't be in a stretchy zone and and it just gives you a little leeway and space to um and you know also so you don't sew on the zipper on the long arm um and account for also batting differences sorts of reasons to have your quilt back bigger than your top. So I just sew off. I don't back stitch a couple inches and that's sufficient. Now because I only have one pin in, I like to do the bottom or the other zipper right now and Straighten it out. Kind of get, oh, and I like my needle down so it doesn't shift so much when I um, am moving along. So my zipper foot is just right up against the teeth. And now I'm ready to do the other side. So this is the side that'll be harder for small home machines. I can take out the pins now because I have half of my quilt is stable on the zipper. And you have to go, and this is the side that's harder for people too because you're kind of sewing backwards 
you're not used to sewing. I mean, most people are not used to sewing this way. So um, I'm going to overlap where I've sewn before just a couple inches. I've taken out my pin, so that's why it's loose. And again, just kind of carefully keep my foot up against the zipper teeth. Moving my way down the to the end edge of the quilt. So again, you're more than welcome to pin more frequently if that makes your life easier to make sure things don't shift. All the way off. So a couple inches overlap there, overlapping. I need my hand here. There are times where I've accidentally, let's say I did something where I realized I'll just cut the thread. So my quilt had started to go off edge and I was holding it funny. And so it's, that's the beauty of basting stitches. I kind of pull it back to a spot where it's more regular. And again, just overlap, realign my quilt and just go forward. So don't stress too much if you go off. Try to catch it right away. Sometimes towards the end, because the quilt's all wrapped up, it gets pulled unexpectedly. And our quilt back is done.